So as we get started with the Introduction to Invitational Education course, I wanted to provide you with a little bit of an overview of Unit 1 and essentially how to start this course. So again, welcome. Glad to have you along for this journey as we begin to look at the topic of Invitational Education. The first reading actually comes from the book Fundamentals of Invitational Education, or as a lot of people call it, the Blue Starfish Book. So we're looking at Chapter 1 there, which basically gives us a little bit of a background. In fact, it, it the chapter itself is, is entitled Imagine a Truly Inviting School, where the authors basically go through and provide us with um, a description of what a really inviting school looks like. The second reading for this week is actually a chapter that comes from the book Invitational Education and Practice in Higher Education, an International Perspective, and it's written by Jim O'Connor. Um, the chapter, which ends up being chapter 15 in the book, is entitled One Educator's Invitational Journey in Higher Education and Beyond. And unlike chapter one in the, the Starfish book, which talks about what an inviting school looks like, Jim's chapter, uh, Jim O'Connor's chapter, takes a look at essentially a personal journey or a personal voyage on becoming an invitational educator. And what that has looked like, both from the time that um, really he started his own educational journey back when he was an undergraduate student through to becoming a classroom teacher, uh, working on his doctoral work and becoming a faculty member, and basically how he's tried to incorporate the ideas of invitational education both in his professional practice and in his life. Um, and these two chapters really sort of set the the context, if you will, or, or, or set the expectations for this particular course. Because really, when we look at this course as a beginning sequence, as a way of um, getting you started in a larger graduate certificate in invitational education or master's of education in invitational education, it's really designed to look at your own journey as an invitational educator and how we can essentially go about um, moving you along that spectrum uh, of becoming intentionally inviting in your interactions with your students, your colleagues, and the larger community uh, that you're engaged with as an, uh, a professional educator. So those are some of, I guess, the advanced organizers that I'd like you to keep in mind as you read through these two particular readings. Now, once you've done the readings, you'll notice that there's a section in the course called course content. And this is where we will always have um, videos, some of which we will create, some of which we will be using from other folks. And as you can see from this particular list here in Unit 1, all of the videos and the resources that we've linked to are ones that others have created. Uh, as you can see, many of them were actually, almost all of them were created by either the International Alliance for Invitational Education or IAIE Hong Kong, uh, which is the International Alliance for Invitational Education in Hong Kong. Um, so I think all of them are, are ones that give you sort of a nice sort of overview or introduction to the topic of invitational education. And as you look through your own uh, work and um, as you move through these, the goal here is after you've done the readings to essentially spend some time either reading or reviewing each of the links as well as watching and reviewing the videos that are there uh, to provide you with sort of the background that you'll need. Now in terms of the actual um, what we're doing here in Unit 1, the main thing that we're doing is essentially setting us up to be able to interact throughout the rest of the course. And the way in which we're going to interact throughout the rest of the course, and in all honesty, throughout much of the Invitational Education program that you're completing, is through blogging. Um, so we're going to be using a, a blogging tool of your choice. Uh, three of the more popular ones are Google, uh, which runs a, a, a tool called Blogger. Uh, WordPress, which is one that you can either go to wordpress.com and they will host a free one for you. 
or you can actually download WordPress onto your own website if you happen to have your own domain and host it there. Um, a third option which uses the WordPress platform is EduBlogs. Now EduBlogs is a system that's set up specifically for educators and their students. So one of the nice things about EduBlogs is the fact that um, all of the folks that are on EduBlogs are involved in education in some way, shape, or form. They're, they're part of the educational community. Whereas anybody can get a blog or a Google account. Anybody can set up a, uh, a WordPress blog on WordPress.com or can download the WordPress uh, system to their own domain. Um, so one of the nice things about them, one of the things I always stress about EduBlogs is the fact that it is specifically set up for educators. Um, so the first thing that you want to do this week, once you've sort of gone through the actual content, um, the first sort of action item, if you will, is to choose between one of these platforms or if you would like to choose a completely different platform. Um, now you'll note that in Canvas, um, in the learning management system, we've provided some resources for you on how to go about setting up any of these three particular ones here. Uh, so if you choose one that isn't one of these three, uh, while well, we will do our best to help you with setting that up, um, there may be things about the platform that we're not familiar with because these are the three ones that we're most familiar with. So once you set up your blog, you want to post an initial entry. That basically just tells people who you are. Now you can do this using text, um, you know, so you can just sort of type out a little introduction. Or if you want, you can create a little video kind of like uh, what I did with the introductory video where I introduced myself in the previous section, so the instructor introduction. Uh, you could do something like that as well. It's entirely up to you, whatever is the um, most convenient way for you to do this and the way in which you feel most comfortable in doing this is the way in which you'd like we'd like you to do it. Now once you've set up your blog and you've posted that initial entry that basically just tells us a little bit about yourself that introduces yourself you'll notice that the first assignment comes up and as you look through the syllabus, there were a number of assignments that we had. Uh, one which is a reoccurring one, or one that will um, pop up in almost each of the units if you look through the schedule. And that's this idea of individual reflections. And what this will generally be is we will ask you a specific prompt that we would like you to reflect upon and then to write that reflection or to talk out that reflection if you'd rather do it in a video or an audio format and then post it to your blog. Um, in addition to doing your own reflection, uh, what we'd like you to do is if you look through the uh, specific rubric for this course, you'll note that interaction is an important part of this. Uh, so as instructors, we will try to interact with you as much as possible, but we'd also encourage you to interact with each other. Um, ask each other questions. Um, point out things that you guys have in common or that you might have in, in dispute or in disagreement or things that you might view in contrary ways. Um, one of the ways in which we learn best um, is through interaction with that more knowledgeable other. If you're familiar with the work of Lev Vygotsky, uh, this idea of social constructivism, he believes, in, and it's a belief that we have here in the Graduate School of Education at Toro University, is that you know students, when they are interacting with folks, that's when they're able to sort of refine their own thinking and to um, expand their opinions, uh, both not necessarily because they're changing their opinions, but because they're being forced to explain those opinions and to reflect upon them and to um, be able to defend them. And in doing so, it helps clarify an individual um, in exactly what they believe um, so challenge each other, uh, ask each other questions, and, and, and do that interaction with each other because it's through that process 
uh, that interaction that you'll find that you not only clarify your own ideas but uh, you also get exposed to a wider range of ideas from your student colleagues. So as you look at each of these prompts, in addition to responding directly to the prompt um, that we're going to ask you or that we're going to ask you to respond to, um, make sure that you interact with each other as you go through. Um, so that's really all that I've got for this particular introduction. You'll note that the only other item in the, the Unit 1 material is a weekly checklist, which essentially gives you a list of things that we're asking you to do um, throughout the unit. So you'll see a unit checklist there. And uh, that's a, a nice little handy tool that you can use to ensure that you've completed everything uh, yourself. So it's sort of like a little self-checklist that you've completed all of the items. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact uh, either of the instructors for this course, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Also, don't forget the uh, support and questions uh, area in the discussion forum, which also may be a spot uh, where you could get questions answered. Uh, and we look forward to working with you throughout the semester.